What's going on, y'all? Not the real Will Smith. Sergeant Smith. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and to underscore Will Smith for more Seaburn content. So it's a little different. I don't really go into military content often, but I got a lot of messages regarding like my Seaburn responsibilities and things like that. But this video specifically is just for the officers. Like what does a chemical branch or, or, uh, officer do? So I'm only speaking based on what I've seen in my career in the position that I'm in, dealing with my battalion level uh, Seaburn officer. So number one, if you are a chem officer and you guys are not in a Seaburn unit, nine times out of 10, almost always, you will be at the battalion level working in the S3 shop, which is just the ops. Like you're dealing with all of the planning and things that go on for Seaburn specifically. It's a saying out that Chem officers, chem NCOs, anybody in the chem corps doesn't do anything. And that's absolutely false. The work that you put in is the work that you're going to get out of it. But not to get off track, a chemical officer at the battalion level, because I can't speak for a Seaburn unit because I'm in a non Seaburn unit and I'm in an FSC, a forward support company. So I report to my chem officer for everything that needs to be done in my cage, any updates anything that needs to go on the CDE report, the chemical detection equipment report, I send that to my chem officer, typically a second lieutenant. You're gonna promote the first lieutenant in that same slot. And eventually you can request as the officer to move to an actual full CBRN unit if you wanna progress in your career. A lot of people also do what's called branch detail and officers, once they hit that first lieutenant rank or that captain rank, uh, they will branch detail into another branch to kind of get a little more knowledge on another branch for officers and MOS for us enlisted folks. So for, I spoke with my chemical officer specifically, and when I met him, he's a second lieutenant, he's a first lieutenant, he's still in the S3 shop. Not only do I send the CDE reports to him, but I'll also go to him whenever I need to order serialized parts. I got in trouble a few months back for going through my own supply chain, my company level supply chain, by ordering masks, which are serialized parts. It needs to go through PBO, is the account property officer for army units. The chemical officer's job is to communicate with the PBO on how that task needs to be done. You don't have to do it yourself as the MCO. The chemical officer knows who to go to is typically a chief, Sometimes you'll have a civilian, they kind of go in and out if they're swapping roles and things like that. And serialized parts can be not only the mask, it can also be detection equipment. Anything that is high, uh, high value, high dollar amounts that are not expendable items, such as J-List. Even J-List, I wouldn't personally order it myself. I would still go to my chemical officer to do that especially in times of warfare. I am at Fort Drum, uh, I have a brigade that is deploying, and we will go through our officer to order extra J-list. That's why the CDE report is important to see what each individual unit is missing. And him as the battalion Seaburn rep, he's able to make that happen with brigade. He works alongside. If you're a brigade uh, chemical officer, you're typically at the captain level. And as the captain, you'll work with the E7. And if you are a battalion level chemical officer, you're typically working with your NCO, which is the E6. And you guys would send your weekly reports, however many uh, meetings that you guys have with your battalion staff. It's typically once a week. You'll sit down with your XO executive officer, who is the major and a lieutenant colonel who's at 05, who's the battalion commander. And you will go over um, the battalion CDE report. So the company send their CDE reports in to battalion level and you as officer, you recreate that to a battalion level so that it lists all of the companies underneath. Um, smartest way to do it is to go through Google Docs. You can make a share drive 
add all little companies underneath it. It'll show the individual needs of the company and then the battalion numbers. You wanna make sure that you're not in the black or the red. You wanna always make sure that you're in the green. Um, it's okay if, if a company has a shortage because it's, it's gonna typically happen. Sometimes soldiers lose things, things need to be reordered, you know, property. That's all property management. But your job as an officer is to make sure that each company is deployable or each company has enough equipment for fighting power. It's not always the case. You got to deal with finances and things like that. So as the officer, you just make sure that A, the funding is available to get the individual companies that need items the most handled and that's other things as well. So also, besides that, because I don't want to go too deep into CD report, because I'm going to individually talk about that um, when I explain more of the responsibilities of NCO in a different video. Also, the chemical officer's job is to make sure that annual training is done chemically. So what does that mean? You have the annual gas chamber that I feel every single company should go through, but sometimes you have the discretion of the major and lieutenant colonel. He might feel that, hey, that's not in the white space, which means the open training space to insert training for the individual companies to handle. You also have DTD, decon detection, uh, decontamination, and then you have DTG. Also at the officer level, I wrote it down, you have operations for field decontamination that are conducted at four different levels, immediate, operational, thorough, and clearance. That's something at my level that I don't do unless it's coming down for battalion. But as the chemical officer, you wanna make sure that you're at least putting this in your EXO's ear, that hey, these things need to be done annually. You always wanna make sure, especially if you're at FSC, because we're kind of the guys that's on the side, like they don't, you know, really worry about us first priority. Um, it's always the BSP, excuse me, BSB, Battalion Sustainment Brigade, that typically takes the bulk of the, that training. FSCs is just good to know because you never know when you're going to need to step in. That's why you're for support. You support the brigade. And as an officer, you just want to kind of be proactive on that. Have that training in place. Have your operation orders created for those. Have your con ops made for like a quick summary for your, your next level of command. Um, just to present it again, to be proactive. You always want to keep documentation of all the paperwork that you do, of all the training that you have, and you want to make sure that the individual companies are completing their required annual training, which will all be explained to you when you go through um, your officer um, specific branch school for chem. I can't speak too much on what officers go through when they go through their chem training because I'm not an officer. I haven't been there. I can only speak on the NCO side. But again, I'm just explaining to you guys based on what my specific uh, chemical officer does at the battalion level because I support him underneath. And as an NCO, you should definitely take care of your officer too. It goes hand in hand. Um, typically, second lieutenants don't have that knowledge. The NCO is expected to know it. But if you are proactive as the NCO of getting your officer the information he needs, it makes his life so much easier when he needs to present that to his command. Um, and it shows that, hey, we have our mission readiness is up there. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else, what else, what else, what else. Only other thing I could think of is appointment orders is what, excuse me, is what my LT told me. You wanna make sure that you have your appointment order saying that, hey, I'm the chemical officer, I'm the battalion chemical officer under S3, da, 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 da. They always have templates for you. Battalion has templates for everything. So you'll have no issue doing that. And as an officer, just be proactive. Go to brigade level. Speak to that chemical captain. He will give you everything that you need. I guarantee you. Everything that you need to be successful, officer. Um, There's a lot of eyes watching you. It's a lot of eyes watching you. They're always going to treat the second lieutenant like the private in a battalion level asset because you are the lowest enlisted, excuse me, the lowest commissioned officer there. But also understand that, you know, you have your support of your uh, chemical NCO who is at E6, if they are working in that capacity, sometimes they're not and you're by yourself. 
but be proactive on that. Go to other companies. There's seasoning seals out there. It's okay if it's an E5. There's seasoning seals out there that have been doing this job that can definitely give you information that you need. Uh, but just to be very clear, always go one step up. Don't go one step down for information first and scout around. Um, they're going to make you jump through hoops. They want to see your way of thinking, your critical thinking as that new officer. Officers are the planners. You know, they make the stuff happen. And the NCOs are the ones that put what the officers put in this air to create. Uh, that sounds terrible. Officers do the planning, NCOs execute. So as officer, make sure that your planning is solid, solidified, sound very confident when you're speaking. And even if you don't know something, make sure that you can have an alibi or you have a or you have a contingency plan on how you're gonna make it happen. Lieutenant colonels and majors, they love to fire people. And if you're in S3, it's gonna be a tough job because a chemical ta the chemical taskings are less than a regular S3 normal taskings of everything else that needs to happen. Um, you will be tasked for other things. Uh, my officer didn't speak too much on it, but that is what he told me. And yeah, that's about it. I didn't want to make this too deep. Um, just some things to expect. Be proactive, go one level up, have your planning solidified, come in there like you know you're trying to run it. Don't come in there like you know everything, but come in there with a plan and come in there with confidence. And you, sir, you, ma'am, will be confident. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Peace.